Welcome to Roughing It With Ruth, the channel where everything is a bit rough around the edges. All of the gear that you see in this video is for a four day, three night backpacking trip in the Drakensberg Mountains in winter. At the end of this video, I will also go over all of the gear that I keep in a separate bag in the car for when I get back from the backpacking trip. This past weekend, we were meant to go on a backpacking trip to the Drakensberg Mountains and then very unexpectedly at the last minute we had to cancel, but I had already packed all of my gear ready to leave that morning. So I thought while I unpack my bag again, I would just show you exactly what I take for a winter backpacking trip in the Drakensberg Mountains. This backpack is the Osprey EJ 48. Is it the EJ 48? 58, 58. <laughs> I really like this bag. It's pretty lightweight despite the fact that it does have a frame and I usually just leave the lid of this backpack at home. This backpack does not have any hip belt pockets but because of the way that the side pockets are designed I can pretty easily get things out even when the bag is on my back. So I have all of my water and my snacks stashed in the side pockets. This is the water bottle that I usually drink out of. It's a Solomon soft flask that has a filter attachment on the lid. Then for a little bit of extra water storage, I just have another Solomon soft flask. This one just has a flat cap on it. And then another extra water storage is this particular bottle. It's called a booby. It's also like a soft flask made of silicon. And what I like about this one is that you can put boiling water in here. So I use this booby both as additional water storage and as my cup in, at camp when I'm making a hot drink like hot chocolate or tea. In total, I have one and a half liters of water in three 500 ml bottles. Then in the other side pockets, I just have my snacks. I've got mini marshmallows, speckled eggs, peanuts covered in wasabi, some biltong snap sticks, some dried apricots. Then the only thing that is left in the side pockets are the tent poles. For this particular trip, I was going to be sharing a tent with Ralph. So he has the fly sheet and the tent body. I have the tent poles and the tent pegs. The tent that we were going to be sharing is the Nature Hike Opalus three-person tent. This rope is strung on the outside because we weren't 100% sure whether we would need rope or not. So I had the rope on the outside just so it could be easily removed if we decided not to take it. If we were going to take it, I would just secure it slightly better to the outside of my pack here. Then in the outside stretch mesh pockets, I have the tent pegs, extremely essential bit of gear. My toilet paper and my sunscreen and hand sanitizer and then instead of a trowel I just take a regular spoon and I use the spoon to dig with. It works really well and it's not very heavy. You just have to, you know, not get confused between the spoon that you're going to eat with and the spoon that you're digging holes with. Then the next thing in this outside stretch mesh pocket are my lunches. This is for the entire trip a box of Salty Cracks crackers and a box of Kiri cheese. And then I've also got a Ziploc bag, which is my trash bag for all my food or other trash that I might need to throw away. And then the last thing in the stretch mesh pocket so that I can get to it very easily is my lightweight rain jacket. This is the First Ascent X Trail woman's size something or other. So that is it for the stuff on the outside of the backpack. I'll now open up the inside and we can take a look at the contents of the backpack. Right on the top I have an extra gas canister. I wonder if I can like hold this up. <laughs> there we go. Right. So this is the inside of the backpack. This gray thing here that you can see is my Sea to Summit dry bag which I use as a pack liner. This red strap over the top is just a compression strap to help hold the contents of your backpack together and attached to the red strap I have my little Petzl headlamp which is just attached with a carabiner to the strap. This is the Petzl Bindi headlamp. I like it because it has a red light function, which I use all the time in the Drakensberg. And it's also extremely lightweight. You can see it's just got shock cord attached to it instead of a full on strap. It's not the most comfortable thing in the whole world, but if you have something else 
on top of your head, such as your hat or a buff even, then you can wear this for a fairly extended amount of time without too many problems. Okay, the very first thing that I have at the top of the pack is this, which is actually a down blanket from Mon Bell, but I use it as a poncho as well. On each corner of the blanket, it has these little ties, and I just use that to tie it around my neck when I'm using it as a poncho. And it's a really big blanket. You can actually clip it into the shape of a sleeping bag as well. And that's what I do at night. I clip it into the shape of a sleeping bag and I use it as an additional liner inside of my regular sleeping bag. Just on its own, this thing is fairly warm. So this adds quite a bit of warmth to my setup. Hot, 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 hot. Then I have a merino wool base layer from Icebreaker. And this I use to sleep in, but if it's really cold, then I might throw this on over my hiking clothes as well. Then I have yet another insulating layer. This insulating layer is a Columbia puffy pullover. So it's got a small zip at the neck area and a small zip down at the waist area. But the rest of it is just a pullover like a jersey, but obviously not stretchy hence the need for the zips. Then I have a base layer for my legs as well. This is also 260 icebreaker merino wool. Then I also bring a cheap set of fleece pajama pants because I do get pretty cold when I sleep. Then these three pairs of socks are all merino wool socks of varying thicknesses. In this little stuff sack, which is actually the stuff sack from a travel pillow, I've got extra underwear and an extra sports bra. This is my warm buff that Stephanie very kindly gave to me. And this I use as a sort of scarf at night or as a beanie over my head and it works very well. The last item of clothing that I have are a pair of gloves. These are extremely cheap wool gloves from the hardware store. This Ziploc bag contains all of my toiletries and first aid kit and repair kit. I've got two extra plastic bags just for carrying wet items or if I need a little bit of extra waterproofing for something. I've got two crepe bandages, a tiny little tub of anti-chafe barrier balm, some latex gloves if you need to deal with wounds, a little toothbrush and a little toothpaste, a tiny little microfiber travel towel, a couple of sanitary products, a space blanket and this is actually a space blanket bag so it's in like a sleeping bag shape and you can crawl right inside of it and it'll close all the way around you. Miscellaneous medication, painkillers, anti-diarrhea medication, antihistamines, that sort of thing. I have this tiny little packet of after sun gel in case anyone does end up getting sunburnt. I have my medical aid card with my medical aid details on it. The tiny little repair kit contains a little bit of twine, a tiny Swiss army knife, some flat pack duct tape, a sewing kit, some safety pins, that type of thing. There's also some uh, glue at the bottom and a repair patch for my air mattress. Some little capsules with electrolytes. And then this pile of stuff is plasters of various sizes and alcohol swabs for cleaning wounds. And that is it for what's inside this bag. Inside of this Ziploc bag, just because I want a little bit of extra waterproofing protection, is my 20,000 milliamp hour power bank, along with all the various cables for my cameras and my cell phone and my watch. If you're not carrying as many electronics as I am, then you definitely can go with a smaller power bank. I was going to try out this Mombell insulated pouch for the first time on a backpack packing trip. It is made to perfectly fit the Monbel risotto meals, some of which I actually have. It's just got insulation in the center to keep things warm while they're rehydrating. And that I was going to use pretty much as a replacement for my bowl because the Monbel meals can cook inside their own pouches. You just slot them into here. Then for heating up water and cooking my trusty MSR reactor, Inside of the reactor, there is, oh gosh, it's quite stuck in there. 
<laughs> there's a little Ziploc baggie with some matches. Then I've got this tiny little Bic lighter, a sponge for cleaning out the pot and also to stop things from rattling around inside here too much. Then a canister of gas and right at the bottom of the pot is the actual stove itself. This is the Vorda Performance 7 Medium Air Mattress. Then this is my food packet for all three nights and four days. Oh man, oh, I was so looking forward to eating this. It's like a little squeezy tube of condensed milk. I'm completely addicted to condensed milk. So I was taking this along as like a dessert thing for after dinner. These are the Monbel risotto meals. And then after those meals were rehydrated, I was going to add these flat pack tuna things to them. Then just in case I wanted to spice up my meal slightly, I have one little packet of Nando's Peri Peri sauce. I've got one single packet of green tea. Then the rest of my drinks, I have this instant matcha latte, which my sister sent me from Japan from Muji. I really like this stuff. The bag itself has a Ziploc closure at the top. So I was just going to use whatever I needed out of it and zip it sealed again. For breakfasts, I know that I really don't like to fuss too much in the mornings and I also tend to not be that hungry. So I've just got two bars. One is a seed bar and the other one is like a yogurt and mango and almond bar. Then I think that the only thing that I have left in here is my sleeping bag. Let's see if I'm right. It's actually not the only thing I have left in here. This is the backpack liner that everything came out of. This is my sleeping bag. It's the North Face Blue Kazoo. It's pretty warm just on its own. Then I do actually have two things left in the backpack that were on the outside of the liner. And those are my trusty camp shoes, which are these Crocs, which I've been using for ages. The tread is like completely worn away. And that is it. That is, that is everything that is in my backpack. In total, it weighed just under 12 kilograms. It was 11.9 kilograms, I think. Might have been 11.89 or something, something like that. I always take an extra bag that I leave in the car on backpacking trips for when I get down off the mountain. Mostly it just contains a change of clothes. So I'll show you exactly what's in there. This is the bag that I use. It's from Salomon. It's just like a little tog bag, gym bag thing. The first thing that I have here is a clean down jacket. This is from K-Way. It's actually a men's one that I had modified to fit me. Then there's a little microfiber towel, slightly larger than the one that I take on the backpacking trip with me. Then I have a fleece top, an extra mask, some tights, a t-shirt, underwear, a buff, some extra socks, some extra shoes. This is the little luggage scale that I take with in this bag, just in case people want to weigh their backpacks before we start out on the trip. Then I have an extra towel. Then I have two dry bags. They're both from sea to summit. Sometimes the showers that you have access to are not the greatest and there tends to be water everywhere. So I can use these to kind of keep the dry things dry while I'm in the shower and then as a laundry bag to put the stinky hiking clothes in away from my other clean clothes. Then this is just my regular toiletry bag. It's just got like shampoo, soap, toothpaste, yeah, deodorant, sanitary products, all that sort of stuff in here. Then the last item is a very old pair of flip-flops. I just keep these in there because the showers are sometimes not so great and I wear these inside the shower and if it happens to be really hot I can just wear these as shoes afterwards. Well thanks so much for unpacking with me that is the entire contents of my backpack for a Drakensberg backpacking trip in winter as well as the bag that I usually leave in the car. If you enjoyed this video you can subscribe to my channel to see videos that I'm going to make in the future or if you'd like to see more from me right now then you can click on my channel name to see all the videos that I've made in the past.